you know, I've been in this industry for a long, long time. And, you know, I got my start right there in Memphis, Tennessee. So what better person than to give a little intro to the only podcast in the UK that specifically talks about Memphis wrestling? That's right. We're talking about Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. Folks, sit back. Grab you a cup of hot tea. Hope you enjoy it. Hello again, everybody. Shane Russell and Luke Jennings right along ringside for another big day of championship wrestling. Hey, folks, this is Shane Russell. My dad was Lance Russell, the voice of Memphis wrestling. I'm coming to you from Memphis, Tennessee. And you're listening to the UK's number one and only Memphis wrestling podcast. This is Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. And here's your host, Mr. Luke Jennings. Got a doggone good-looking show lined up. This is the future, baby, and Jimmy Hart's here. You're not in the same caliber as I am. Who's the greatest wrestler in the world and why am I? You're acting like a hoodlum. Now, come on, quit it! Hello, what do you hear? What do you say? Finally, that's worked. I didn't have my microphone plugged in properly. <laughs> Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the UK's number one and only Memphis Wrestling-related podcast. We are, as always, the Memphis Content Wrestling Cast, bringing you the episode today from the Old Bakery Studios. We are bringing it to you on August the 31st. Unbelievably, August has made its way here, and it's gone already. Tomorrow is... September, unbelievably, it's uh, this year has gone pretty, pretty quick. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button here on our home, the place to be wrestling network. Home of great shows such as Who's Next with This Ring, PTB Weekend Special, PTB Ends Men Event, Russell Tracks, and so many other great shows brought to you by the place to be, including everything from the old bakery productions. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at PTBN Wrestling, and you can find them on all good podcast supplies, as you will do. Our sister network, the North South Connection, a fine bunch of uh, ladies and gentlemen over there bringing you some great shows such as Row One, Seat One, Wrestling Warzone, The Jenny Position, Hail to the Keith, Kronoso, Alakawa Keithy, Extreme Throwaway Dance, and so many other great shows covering a whole range of both wrestling and non wrestling topics. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at No So Pod Network. The links for both description the links for both networks. YouTube channels are in the description, and you can also find Backbone Wrestling Network around on all good podcast suppliers. They are bringing you such great shows as New Gen on a Mission, Ruthless Aggression, Highway to the Impact Zone, Territorial, Cross Up, The Shit Take, and more. For more information, on, you can find about the network on Twitter at Backbone24. That's all one word, Backbone, and the number 24. You will also find us on all good podcast suppliers. Old Bakery Productions Network. Everything's there. Uh, we've got a load of new everything. Everything comes out the same day as it does on Place to Be, but it's just a little bit more easy if you want to find some older episodes. So you can find us on all good podcast suppliers. YouTube.com for us. That Memphis Cast allows you to watch today's video. Like I said last week, but when this finishes, um, the video is going to be pretty much redundant. The last. 1984 episode will be coming out on the 26th of October uh, and then pretty much the channel is going to be redundant because I'm going to be using other people's channels to watch 1985, 1986 but the links to the videos will all will still be in the video description so you can go over to their channels and support them by watching the video. You can also support us prowrestlingtees.com for us that's Memphis Cast if you want to buy a t-shirt then uh, go over there there may be a design you enjoy. When it was cool.com for podcast articles and much more on retro pop culture, comics, wrestling, movies, TV, toys, history, and more. And once you've visited that, you can go and visit the history of WWE.com. Richard and Graham have got you covered over there for all your historical needs be it TNA, Ring of Honor, Smoky Mountain, ECW, WCW, slash NWA, WWF, WWF, WWE. If you look at title histories, you can. TV show histories, arena histories, you name it. The boys have got you covered. This week, we're covering the third of November 1984. Last week we covered the 27th of October where we saw Father and Son, Masked Men. And that was pretty much it. There wasn't really a great deal last week, but there, as always, it's a fun watch and we do our, enjoy ourselves here in Memphis before we head down to ringside for Lance and Dave. Let's see what's been happening around the rest of the wrestling world this week on the 28th of October. A 10 minute wrestling from Florida had a show in Orlando, Florida, which 
Dory Funk Jr. defeated NWA World Champion Ric Flair by disqualification. There is also a show in Minneapolis, Minnesota for the WWF in the Met Center in front of 8,500. They saw Rick McGraw fighting Rene Goulet to a draw. Ken Patera defeated Rene Goulet. What the fuck? Ivan Putski fought David Schultz to a no contest. Mad Dog for Sean defeated Jerry Valiant. The Junkyard Dog fought George Steele to a no contest. Okay, Andre the Giant defeated Kamala, the Spoiler defeated Salvatore Bolomo, the Iron Sheik defeated Rocky Johnson, and you guessed it, Hulk Hogan fought Big John Studd to a no contest. Jesus Christ. Also on the 28th, uh, El Hio del Santo defeated Negro Casas for the UWA lightweight title in Mexico City, Mexico. 29th of October, Championship Wrestling from Florida in West Palm Beach, Florida. This time, NWA World Champion Ric Flair defeats Mike Graham. Also on the 29th, World Class Championship Wrestling have a card in Dallas. Main evented by Kerry Von Elk defeating Gino Hernandez by disqualification to win the American Heavyweight title. Also on the 29th, Southeast Championship Wrestling have a show in Birmingham, Alabama in the Boutwell Auditorium where Pork Chop Cash defeats Ron Starr. Bill Ash defeats Scott Armstrong. Bob Armstrong defeated Lord Humongous by disqualification. Johnny Rich and Steve Armstrong, the Rat Patrol, defeated Pat and Randy Rose. Arn Anderson defeats Mr. S- Mr. Olympia in a strap match. Austin Idol defeats Boris Zukov. 30th of October, Championship Wrestling from Florida in Tampa. Jay Youngblood defeats Ric Flair in a non-title match. Also on the 30th, there is a show in Buffalo, New York for the WWF. 7,500 are packing out the Memorial Auditorium to watch. Moondog Rex defeat Rick McGraw. The Spoiler defeating S.D. Jones. Ken Patera defeated Rene Goulet. The Tonga Kid defeated Moondog Spot. Nikolai Volkov defeated Sergeant Slaughter by disqualification. Ivan Putski defeated the Iron Sheik. WF champion Hulk Hogan defeats Randy, no, Roddy Piper by disqualification. 31st of October, Championship Wrestling from Florida in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Music Theatre. Dory Funk Jr. defeats NWA World Champion Ric Flair by disqualification. 3rd of November, 1984, which is today. 3rd of November, so we've got a few shows. We've only got two shows. One is the AWA in Chicago, Illinois, in front of 18,301. Brad Rangans defeated Steve Regal. Not that one. Jimmy Garvin defeated Steve O. Mr. Saito defeated Baron Von Raschke. Kurt, Von, Kurt Henning <laughs> battled Nick Bogwinkle to a draw. The Fabulous Ones defeat the Road Warriors by disqualification. Jerry Blackwell defeats King Kong Brody. Boom Boom Bundy and Jerry Blackwell won a tag team battle royal. And then finally, we are in the Boston Garden in front of 15,635 for a WWF show. And they are seeing Jose Luis Rivera defeating Mr. X. David San Martino defeated Frank Savage. Paul Lorndorf defeated S.D. Jones. The Junkyard Dog defeated Nikolai Volkov by disqualification. The Spoiler defeated Sam Muller. WF Champion Hulk Hogan defeats Roddy Piper via countout. The Tonga Kid defeats Jerry Valiant. WF Champ- sorry, WF Intercontinental Champion Greg Valentine defeated Tito Santana by disqualification. Tony Atlas defeats Pete Doherty. Bruce Beefcake defeats Salvatore Bellomo. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's now head down to Lance and Dave as we cover the 3rd of November 1984 in the 172nd episode of Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the drill. Please, uh, please, uh, please enjoy. <laughs> Next week, coming up this week on Championship Wrestling, you will see the Poppos, Sir Lanny Poppo, and he'll be team with the Macho Man, Randy Savage. He will be here in our opening match today. Coming up a little bit later, it should be a terrific match. Phil Hickerson on one side of the ring, on the other, it'll be Rick Rude. Then later today, Cortico will be here, and in the main event, it's going to be teamed up now, the King, Jerry Lawler, and his partner will be... Handsome Jimmy Badger. All of it coming up today on Championship Wrestling. We'll be back with it in just a moment. Stay with us. 
we've got no Lance, he's on holiday, but we're going to be seeing uh, Phil Higgson versus Rick Rude. That's going to, that could be a uh, that could be a happening. We're also going to be seeing Korchenko. There is a uh, Dave Dynasty Dynasty, how we want to announce it. He's got a podcast, and he recently interviewed um, Korchenko. Uh, what is Dave's podcast called? I know he's on all good podcast suppliers. Uh, Dave Dynasty shows. I will have a look while Dave talks about missing children. Perhaps do our part to help out. Jerry Lawler is here with us uh, right now with uh, a friend of his, Jerry. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you're right, I do have a little buddy of mine here, and I wanted to talk for just a second to Jason and to everybody out there. You know, uh, there's nothing more important to anybody in the world than your children. I'm sure you all agree with that. And the, the problem that is becoming an epidemic all across the country with uh, children being kidnapped or coming up missing or running away from home uh, is such a problem that, as you said, we here at Championship Wrestling with our child search segment are going to try to help out with that. And another way that we can help out with it, not only in uh, broadcasting the information about the children that are already missing, I think the most important thing is to try to, uh, try to keep this kind of tragedy from ever taking place to begin with. And uh, one of the ways we can do this is to help inform children like Jason right here and, and let them know how to keep themselves safe. And Jason, I just wanted to, what we're going to try to be doing from week to week is give kids like Jason some little tips. And uh, they're, they're very basic things. And, and of course, Jason, now, you know, I'm a pretty good wrestler, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you know how I got to be a pretty good wrestler? I'll tell you how. It's, it's remembering some basic things. Like when somebody goes to hit me in the nose, I got to remember to duck. And so the ways, the ways that you can keep yourself really safe at all times is to remember some basic things. And one of the things that we're going to try to tell you, Jason, and all the kids out there is the very first tip, and it's, it's so basic and it's so simple, is just never, ever go up to a car that, that has a stranger in it, somebody that you don't know. Will you always remember that, Jason? Okay, if there's somebody in a car and says, hey, kid, come here, uh, if you don't know who it is, don't go, okay? Will you remember that? Okay, and all you kids out there remember that. And every week we'll have some basic tips like that, and it'll be so simple to keep kids like Jason safe, and hopefully we won't have to be having child search uh, segments on here very long because we won't have any more missing children, okay? Okay, Dave? Okay. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Jason. All right, guys. All right, we do want to take, uh, take Justin. By the way, we're two for two. In the two weeks the championship wrestling has been uh, cooperating with law enforcement agencies on this, we've announced uh, two missing children, and both of them have been found within hours uh, from the time they were mentioned. We thank you for your cooperation on that. And we're asking you to help again this week. We have uh, this week's missing child. This week's missing child is Kim Jordan. Kim Jordan is 15 years old. She's been missing since October 16th, 5 feet 6 inches tall, 125 pounds. She has long brown curly hair and blue eyes, possibly headed for California. That is the number at the bottom of your screen. If you have seen Kim Jordan or have any information on where she might be, please call area code 901-528-8400. 901-528-8400. Kim Jordan is the missing child for today on Championship Wrestling. We thank you for your cooperation on that. Are you through? Are yes, you finally through? through the well, moment, yes. I cannot believe this is too boring out here. You know, let me give you some tips, baby. First of all, if a kid looks like Jason, nobody's going to want to steal the kid in the first place out here, man. But let me just say this, baby. Let me just say this. this is, you know, I, I am so valuable to professional wrestling right now. You know, did you wake up this morning and see me on Championship Wrestling, Georgia? Tell me. Channel 17, you, you 55 the million people all over the world. That's right, baby. New York City, all over the world. You know, I'm a very, very important man. Rich and famous, and I'm telling you right now, superstar in professional wrestling. But you know what I realized? I realized something. I said, you know, when I go to these arenas around the country, all over, there's a lot of little kids, like this Jason kid and stuff, that are calling me wimp and sissy and throwing things at me. When I turn my back in the ring, I have the Jerry Lawlers and the Valiants and these type people trying to stab me in the back. You know, Jerry Jarrett, right? Big time promoter. You know, he's got him a bodyguard 24 hours a day. Boy, he's got that house of his all lit up. He's got guards and guns all over the place. You know, even Eddie Marlin. Eddie Marlin, ma'am. Eddie Marlin's got him a bodyguard that goes around with him. 
the president of the United States, well, I should say the president's got one, but the new president, Mondale, because I'm telling you, he's going to win hands down. There's no doubt about that. He's got bodyguards. Everybody has. Well, you know what I realized? I realized I am so important that I better get myself a bodyguard because, like I said before, you can't trust anybody anymore. You know, I was kidnapped not long ago by Austin Idol, and I ain't going to happen to me again. Now, see, there's those people again doing that, and well, that's the exact reason why I've got this man standing next to me. Come here, baby. This man is Dr. Detroit, baby. Don't listen to him. I want you to turn around and face this camera right now because I'm going to do something that's never been done before on TV, baby. I want you to take this mask off right here, baby. This, baby, is going to be my new bodyguard. Take your jacket off, pal. Take your jacket off right now. This is my new bodyguard. He's going to be with me 24 hours a day. Now, you know what I did for him, baby? I took him this past week and I had his name changed because like every good lord, every good master, every good boss, baby, you give somebody a name that you love. You give somebody a name that's going to stay with you 24 hours a day. When I go to the bathroom, this man's going to be with me everywhere I go from now on. And nobody's going to call me Wimp Sissy no more. Because if they do, he's going to reach out there, bring you up to me, and I'm going to slap you all over the place. You understand that? Well, look at these guns right here, baby. You see this right here? Now, this man, like I said before, is big and he is bad. Kung Fu Karate. He was a professional boxer. He won 59 professional fights before he retired, baby. Now, I want you to tell these people exactly what's going to happen to anybody that hurts me, baby. All right, baby, this is, this is what's going to happen. Anyone that takes one string of hair what and is? Mr. That's Todd's right, head. That's right, baby. We're going to knock you all the way back into next week. That's right, pal. Next week. Look at these guns right here, baby. Now, one more thing that I want to get off my mind out here. You know, for the last year, I've been humiliated by Jerry Lauder. You know, he's got this Wilt Buster record. You go to any mall in the city here, and you see Wilt Buster t-shirts with my picture on the front of them. Yeah, laugh. Go ahead. Go ahead and laugh. So, you know what? I decided today, I had a meeting with my first family. You know what I told them? I said, boys, it's time that we start to get going, and we start doing something, baby. Start getting our act together. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what? We made up our minds. Lawler, valiant, rude, savage. From now on, anybody gets in our way, they're going to get run over, pal. Run over. And I've got something in store today for Mr. Lawler and Mr. Valiant and Mr. Rude and Mr. Savage. Anybody, baby. You're going to see a new era in professional wrestling. So, I hope you people stay tuned if you can keep awake out here from some of this junk that was on a while ago. Like I said before, my new bodyguard, baby. Show me. Show him his guns, baby. Show him to him. From now on, nobody touches Jimmy Hart. Nobody. That means nobody. You understand that? You understand it? Come on, Dr. D. Come on, baby. I mean, should I say Jimmy Hart Jr.? That's going to be his new name. I had his name changed to Jimmy Hart Jr. So when you call him, you say Jimmy Hart Sr. and Jimmy Hart Jr. Right, right baby? Right, baby. 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 Right, Dr. Detroit has been renamed as Jimmy Hart Jr. He's now the bodyguard of Jimmy Hart Sr. Bit weird that he gave him a name. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about it. Anyway, the, wrestle, the podcast I was talking about was Wrestling Nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. It can be found on the Wrestle Cooper Network. He's spoken to uh, greats like Duke Drosy, Joel Goodhart, Ron Fuller, John Tatum, Mike Quackenbush, etc., uh, but like I said, I think he's got uh, Korchenko on an episode upcoming soon. So that's wrestling. That is uh, wrestling nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. Can we find all, all podcast supplies through the Wrestle Caribbean Network? So we've got Keith Robertson and Kurt von Hess going up against Randy Savage and Lanny Poffo. Fall, 15 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. The bell sounds, and we are underway as it's Sir Lanny Popo starting again. Keith Robertson. Lanny really going to work on uh, Robertson back on the ropes and now hammering him. So Lanny starting for his team. Uh, silver trunks, silver boots coming against Keith Robertson. Black trunks, black boots. Kurt von Hess came in. Brandy Savage has got a big old bandage around his head. Randy Savage drags Kurt Von Hess to the outside. Oh, clobbered forearm by Lanny to the back of Keith. Randy Savage picks up Kurt Von Hess, slams him down in the ring, small package. Lanny gets the in. Pure chaos here with Puffer Mania. Randy Savage now with a chair. Standing over Kurt Von Hess. Oh, drops the chair. <clears throat> I don't know how Randy got that. Dude, did we have any results from... <laughs> The Mid South Coliseum, because uh, there was nothing on that in that page was there about results. 
So we are looking at October the 29th. Yeah, October the 29th, there is a elimination tag match. Tommy Gilbert and Eddie Gilbert lost to Lanny Poffer and Randy Savage. Uh, King Kong Bundy lost to Rick Rude. Phil Hickerson beat Johnny King. Tommy Rich defeated Dr. Detroit. Kochenko defeated Rufus R. Jones. And then there was a no disqualification match. Jerry Lawler and Jimmy Valiant defeating the Dirty White Boys. Uh, next night in Louisville on October the 30th, the Nightmares defeated Tim Ashley and Steve Constant. King Kong Bundy defeated Rufus R. Jones. Tommy Rich defeated Kurt Von Hess. Kochenko defeated Tracy Smothers. Eddie Gilbert lost to Lanny Poffo by disqualification. Dirty White Boys defeated Randy Savage and Jimmy Valiant. Uh, yeah. With Tracy's about to, I don't know if, if and when we'll ever see Tracy on television. I know we do couple of years I think from now but I don't think we'll see him anytime soon with Randy Macho Man Savage Sir Lanny Poffo going against the Gilbert that occurred at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis Tennessee and what what happens from outside the ring with Phil Hickerson let's watch right now Gilbert. I'm confused So we're seeing uh, Lanny and Randy against Eddie and Tommy Gilbert. Gilbert's clear on house. Lanny holds on, skins the cat. Comes back in, drop kicks Eddie into Tommy. Paul Morton, the referee. Eddie Gilbert falls over the back of Lanny. Paul Morton goes for the cover. One, two, three. Lanny gets the win. Lanny's getting a few uh, pinfall victories here in Mempho. elimination match so Eddie, Eddie has been eliminated the match is still running he's not the match is not over it's just now going to be Tommy Gilbert versus Randy Savage and Lanny Poffo Eddie Gilbert not happy Eddie Gilbert just sitting in the corner with his hands crossed Gilbert having a uh, temper tantrum, I think, there. Paul Morton telling the Gilberts that if Eddie does not leave, he will award the match to the Puffos. Tommy Gilbert getting some words of wisdom from Jimmy Hart. Randy Savage now grabs Eddie Gilbert, takes him to the outside, and throws him back to the dressing room. Good lord. Tommy Gilbert from behind attacking Lanny Poffo. Lanny Poffo is slammed by Tommy Gilbert. <coughs> Tommy Gilbert again scoops up Lanny, slams him back down. Randy hasn't come back yet. Tommy Gilbert goes up to the second rope. Randy's now back. Tommy Gilbert in the second row. Oh, drops her knee across the chest. Good lord. Tommy Gilbert doesn't seem to need a partner, so damn sure. Oh, big forearm smash. Need the gut of Tommy Gilbert. Tommy ramming. Oh, Lanny into the top turnbuckle. Well, like I, like I say, this isn't a top turnbuckle. This is a, a metal hook wrapped in a bit of tape. Tommy Gilbert now with a oh, closed fist to the. Facial extremities of Lanny Poffo. Paul Morton now trying to get Randy Savage out of the ring. And Randy Savage having a fit. He wants in there. Big elbow right at the base of the neck by Tommy Gilbert. 
And we're now choking Tommy on the uh, Lanny on the ropes in front of the referee. Tommy Gilbert again. Ooh. Shot to the throat, maybe there. He had his back to the hard cam, but he knew it was going to be a. He knew some dirty deeds were going to be done dirt cheap when Tommy Gilbert was in the ring. Now choking Lanny on the second rope. Randy Savage trying to get into the ring, trying to get into the match. No. Lanny got to the corner, but no tag was made. No tag was made. Oh, Tommy with Albert at the back. Oh, big uppercut there by Tommy Gilbert. Drops the elbow. And again. <clears throat> Tommy Gilbert. I've been very, very impressed with seeing Tommy Gilbert. You think of second generation start. You think of sort of... Um, He's an elderly, he's not an elderly gentleman, but he's an, an elder uh, sort of wrestler. Phil Hickerson now dragging Randy Savage off the apron. Good Lord. Phil Hickerson now coming out and absolutely annihilating Randy Savage on the outside. But yeah, I'm very impressed with Tommy Gilbert. Um, you think sort of elder elder wrestler. You think they're going to be absolutely terrible. You sort of think of no disrespect, but Tozo Yamamoto and those kind of guys. But Tommy Gilbert is a very good, very accomplished wrestler. Even at a, um, a later stage in life. Phil Hickson absolutely annihilating Randy Savage on the uh, commentary station here. Good lord. Inside Tommy Gilbert still in control of uh, Lanny. Referee trying to get Tommy Gilbert to uh, stop choking. I think Hickson's gone back stage now. Randy Savage is laying prone on the announce table. from both eyes or at least the left eye to make up slamming Lanny oh knee to the back and again oh and again Tommy Gilbert working over that back. He has been most of the match by the looks of it, or most of this second part of the match. Irish rip now by Tommy. Ducks his head, card number state by a ring veteran. Lanny Poffer now of an octopus, uh, sorry, abdominal stretch in the middle of the ring. Abdominal stretch applied by Lanny Poffo. Jimmy Hart now on the apron. Lanny Poffo cinching in the abdominal stretch. Lanny Poffo in control of the... Uh, Paul Morton's there checking with Tommy Gilbert whether or not he wants to give it up. Oh, who the hell is this? Oh, masked man in the ring, maybe? I don't know who that is. Someone's just coming and throwing some powder in the face of uh, Lanny Poffo. And whoever it is has just. Oh, dropped Lanny Poffo with a pile driver. Poffo and Randy are going to win this match by disqualification. Whoever this masked man is has come in attacking uh, Lanny Poffo. Lance doesn't matter. Ziggy. He's got Ziggy written on his jeans. Not entirely sure who this is then. Ziggy. I'm bringing in the ringside rope. Randy Savage bleeding profusely from that attack from Phil Hickerson. Ziggy now choking Lanny Poffer with the, uh, the ringside rope. While fans uh, tell him he's number one. Bringing those, that big steel uh, pole that holds the rope up. Oh, and it drops on the kidneys of uh, Lanny Poffer. Good lord. Paul Morton gets that out of the ring. Ziggy now pulling Lanny Poffer out. Oh, throws him over this commentary station. While well, in the ring, Tommy's brutally attacking the. Randy Savage. Randy Savage is leaving a very. Uh, he's wearing the wearing the crimson mask and leaving a uh, a claret trail on the ring on the uh, canvas. Oh, Lanny Poffer now slammed into the side into a table. I am the table. Tommy pulling around the facial features of a macho man. Good lord! Don't think I've ever seen Randy bleed so much. Does he really? Does he bleed in WWF? I don't think he ever does. He 
Does he? I'm trying to think. Seven, no, he doesn't bleed at seven. Hogan does at five. I don't think Randy ever bleeds in on mainstream, does he? Maybe WCW in that feud with uh, DDP, maybe, but I don't. I don't ever remember seeing Randy Savage bleed. I'm just trying. To, just trying to visualise where you know big big time matches that he sort of had. No, I don't, I don't think he ever did against. Did he? I don't think did he when Honky did the guitar shot. Not sure. I don't think. I don't think. I can't think of anything. Jimmy Valent now finally rolling into the ring to uh, send the Gilberts running. We'll be back for some more action, hopefully, in a short second. We've got that uh, presidential uh, bunting on the side of the ring again. That uh, seems to be a common feature now here in Memphis. I think most of you championship wrestling fans are aware a few weeks ago there was a falling out between King Kong Bundy and his former partner Rick Rude. It resulted in the match Rude against King Kong Bundy, and here is what happened. We're seeing, um, excuse me, we've got math on the sweets. We're seeing uh, footage now from the mid half costume King Kong Bundy versus Rick Rude. Bundy wearing uh, black single black boots, Rude wearing. Leopard print tights, red boots. I was reversed by. Oh, Jesus! What a back body drop by Rick Rude. Holy moly! He whipped uh, Bundy in the corner as Bundy comes stumbling out of the corner. He back dropped him over. Good lord. Big round by Rick Rude. Big round by Rick Rude. And again. Rick of the eyes. Obviously, Rick Rude is now a good guy, now leaving the first family. So he's getting a few cheers. Oh, elbow at the back of the head. Big right hand by Rude. And again. Hits the ropes. Big right hand. Oh, down goes Bundy. Good lord. Bundy went down first time. Jimmy Hart's on the ring on the back of Rick Rude. Takes him down. Jimmy Hart now. Nope. Someone's coming because the crowd are looking. Who's that? Oh, Dirty White Boys, Dirty White Boys are now in, attacking Rick Rude. Paul Morton rings the bell as the Dirty White Boys two on one Rick Rude. Dirty White Boys double slam Rick Rude. Jimmy not saying something, he can't quite understand what he's saying. Ooh. Big round by Bundy. Kicks by Jimmy Hart, good lord, four on one here for, on poor Rick Rude. Dirty White Boys now continue to pummel Rick Rude as well as King Kong Bundy there. Pummeling as poor old Rick Rude's been ping-ponged around the first family. Oh, Jimmy Hart's giving him some shots as well. Good Lord. Rude is down. Rude is now being kicked by the Dirty White Boys. Paul Morton just trying to get him to stop it, but they're, they're, they're not listening to Paul Morton. Who would? <coughs> Excuse me. Dirty White Boy's still kicking on. Rude. Oh, I need the top of the head there by uh, Len Dent, by Tony Anthony, I think. Bundy now kicking. Bundy's just sort of stood there. The Dirty White Boys are doing all the hard work. Bundy's not really doing anything. And some Jimmy and Jerry Lawler now turn the dirty white boys around and knock them down with some right hands. Right there, and we've got Jimmy. We've got a match. We've got a match. We got to get underway right now. You've already been out here a couple of times. We've got Rick Rude going against Phil Hickerson. Want to get it underway right now? I know it. You've got, a, like you said, you've got a match scheduled. But I, I went to Phil Hickerson a while ago, and he's in the first family now. And I asked him to step back because there's something that I want to talk about right now. So he's in the back right now. But there's something I want to say. You know, like I said earlier, everywhere I go, I've got these, these, these people that got Wilt Buster t-shirts, Wilt Buster records, 
My kids go to school all over the city here. The people are calling them sissies. Your daddy's a wimp. He's a coward, you know. And, and my daddy called me on the phone this week. And he said, you know, son, he said, I just saw you on some of the cable TV. And he said, everywhere you go, the people are making fun of you. He said, you're disgracing the heart name. He said, you know, when I, when I brought you up, he said, I never told you what to do and, and where to go, but he said, I'm going to give you some advice right now. He said, sometimes you've got to do what a man's got to do. And he said, I, I know these guys that, that you're wrestling against are twice your size, but still, it's better to get beat up sometimes than to run and be called a coward and a quitter. So what I'm trying to say, Dave Brown, is this. I'd ask Phil Hickerson to step aside because what I'd like to do right now, instead of Phil Hickerson, I'd like for me to crawl in the ring right now with Rick Rude, right now with Rick Rude, and if Rick breaks my nose, if he breaks my jaw, if he breaks my leg, at least I can have self-respect for myself. And my kids can go to school this week, and at least they'll know their daddy had enough guts to crawl into a, a ring with somebody, and the guy might be twice their size. So no matter what happens, I don't care, because at least I'm going to clear the record with all you people over there that I'm not a whip or a coward anymore. So if Rick will come out here, I'll get in the ring with him right now, and the best man will win. You're going to take Hickerson's that's place? Man, that's right. I'm you against Rick. Well, I... Rick Rude will have to agree to that change. He's trying to, uh, he's trying to go in a match against Phil Hickerson. But I got to tell you, the opportunity to get hard in there, one against one, I got to think Rick Rude is going to like the idea. He comes through the door. He's got a smile on his face. As it's Hart by himself, right up there in the center of the ring. Yeah, Rick's coming this way. Rick, uh... I don't know if you heard what he said. He's asked Hickerson to step aside. He wants to go against you one against one. Did you just see the tape? Yeah, I did. You ever hear what they say? Paybacks are up. Well, I better not say that here on TV. But I want to quote a not-so-famous American. This has got to be the greatest day of my life. I think that's an agreement to the change in the match from Rick Rude. It's going to be Rude against Jimmy Hart. As Hart, oh yeah, Hart up there on his knees in the ring. And there comes Rick Cruz. Oh, what? The bell is rung and the match is now over. The bell rung to start and then the bell rung to stop because Jimmy Hart threw powder in the eyes of Rick Rude. Jimmy Hart now handcuffing Rick Rude to the top rope. Jimmy Hart decided to take... Um, Phil Hickerson's place, and it's uh, Jimmy Hart still hasn't managed to handcuff Rick Rude. Rick Rude's free, and he's chasing after Rick Rude. Rick, oh, good lord, Jimmy Hart's annihilating Rick Rude or something there, but Rick Rude's trying to uh, get hold of him. More powder in the face by Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart, uh, a light blue top, dark blue tights, white boots. Rick Rude, multicolored uh, tights, red boots. This match is over, but uh, that's not stopping these two rolling around. Jimmy Hart's still trying to handcuff Rick Rude to the top rope. Jimmy Hart escapes. Jimmy Hart, oh no, Rick Rude catches him. Rick Rude's got him. Rick Rude's got him by the leg. Jimmy Hart sort of held on, he's held in, they're stuck in the ropes. Jimmy Hart's wearing red converse. Here come the dirty white boys, dirty white boys now coming to attack Rick Rude. Jimmy Hart's still, no, he's got three of the ropes. Dirty white boys now double teaming Rick Rude again. What is Jimmy Hart whipping him with? He's whipping him with something. A little strap or something. I don't know how effective those um <coughs> don't know how effective those strap attacks are by Jimmy Hart. <laughs> Hundred pounds soaking wet if you will. Dear white boys still attacking. Oh, here come Jimmy Valiant and Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler and Jimmy Valiant coming out to save the day once again for Rick Rude. Clearing house are uh, Lawler and Valiant. Oh, Jimmy Hart with a chair. Dirty White Boy still attacking as they're leaving the ring. There's a Dirty White Boy. I think that's Tony Anthony attacking Jimmy Valiant on the outside. Oh, Jimmy. Good Lord. Donk. Jimmy Hart fucking just took that chair over the fucking head. I don't know if we can hear that. Hold on. Hart with a chair. Good <laughs> Good lord, talk about unprotected chair shot. Holy moly. Regardless of if, I, if that's Jimmy Hart or fucking King Kong Bundy while in the chair, you could hear that go donk. 
Do well, boys. Still, Tony Humphrey still tucking Jimmy Valiant on the outside while Jerry Lawler's trying to get the upper hand on Len Denton in the ring. Len Denton now attacking uh, Rick Rude. He's now attaching him to the top rope while Jimmy Hart attacks Jerry Lawler. Eddie Marlin now out there. I don't think Rude's still not attached. Who's that? Oh, sir. Jimmy Hart Jr. Do well, boys. Still attacking Valiant and Lawler now on the outside. How, how can they not hook a fucking he's got the handcuff on his wrist the other half bit of handcuff is open how can no one attach a fucking handcuff to a rope for fuck's sakes finally been attached by yeah, Jimmy Hart Jr the artist formerly known as Dr. Detroit what have they got here something they got a bottle of something they're now about to pour over Jimmy Valiant a couple of jars of molasses they're tarring and uh, Tyron and Feather and Jimmy Valiant and Jerry Lawler by the looks of it. You can't you can't have a Southern Wrestling Company without a Tyron Feather angle. Rick Rude's loose. Rick Rude is loose. But the Dirty Warriors are still throwing uh, feathers and out over Jimmy Valiant. Holy moly, got big old bin bags full of feathers. The studio floor is now covered in feathers. As I, oh, it's all in Jimmy Valiant's hair and beard and everything. Good lord. Oh, oh. Tea and fizzy. Lawler and Rick Rue. Let's take a break. See if we can clean up some of this mess. We'll be back in just a moment. go with tag team action here this uh introduction uh one fall 15 minute time limit match introducing at uh at uh, 222 pounds out of st petersburg florida in the ring is john king his partner out on the apron from memphis tennessee at 218 pounds jerry bryant and going against them at a total of 470 pounds from san francisco california the dirty white boys so we've got the dirty white boys going against john king and uh Bryant, Jerry Bryant, John King starting for his team, uh, black tights, silver boots, going against Tony Anthony, whose dirty white uh, trousers and those black boots, full arm dragon twist by John King, who now tags in Jerry Bryant, Jerry Bryant now tagged in, orange trunks, white boots, oh, oh orange singlet, sorry, footage sometimes is a bit grainy, Elwood body slam followed by an Elwood drop on Jerry Bryant, Jerry Bryant, as we discovered last week, been wrestling for uh, quite some time in the Memphis, Tennessee area. Tony Anthony drags him out of the corner. Big round. Tags into Len Denton, who comes off the ropes and, oh, smash on the back. Big slam there by Len. Elbow drop from Jerry Bryant. Excuse me, I keep hitting my uh, microphone stand, sorry. You might hear a good dunk. Irish up there by Lynn Denton on Jerry Valiant. Oh no, he puts him against the ropes and chops him. Now here comes the Irish whip. Big back elbow down goes Jerry. Uh, what boy stops him from getting the tag. Tag in uh, Lynn Denton. No, Tony Anthony, Tony Anthony. Irish up by Lynn Denton. Double back elbow by the Dirty White Boys. Stomp by Tony. Double upper arm, as Dave calls it. Irish whip coming by Tony. Big clothesline. Down goes Jerry Bryant. Oh, drops the elbow. Goes to Heed. One. Two. Pulls him up. <clears throat> oh, Jerry Bryant trying to fire up from his knees. Trying to put, punch him in the belly welly. Oh, but right in the eyes by Tony Anthony. Tags into Len Denton. And Denton raking the eyes of Jerry Bryant across the top rope. Jerry Bryant rammed head first at the top turnbuckle. Oh, Jerry Calhoun for those who care or uh, what he's wearing. He's wearing a blue shirt, black trousers. We've got uh, green ropes, blue canvas, 
red and blue ring posts, I think. Definitely red ring post I can see. I think there's a blue one as well. Yeah. Oh, Tony Anthony about again now. Club on the way on. The gut and back of head of Jerry Bryant sends him down, picks him back up. Tag into Len Denton. Oh, big shot there to the gut by Len Denton. Slings him in his corner. In comes John King, but he's immediately met by Len Denton. Oh no, Len Denton. Uh, John King's firing up. He's firing up. Irish up on Len Denton. Oh, ducked his head down. Card and by a ring veteran. Gut wrench suplex by Len Denton. Picks up John King again. Turns him around, tags in Tony Anthony. Duh. Oh, boy. Russian leg sweep. Lendenton with the cover. One, sorry, Tony Anthony with the cover. And the three. Dirty white boys win. There's some poor guys now sweeping up the, f sweeping up the feathers. We could have beat them in a minute, baby. We just wanted to have a little slight workout, baby. Yeah. We're ready for now. Oh, they won the match, Jim. Dirty White Boys uh, getting the victory here. It was uh, pretty much Dirty White Boys all the way through the match against John King and Jerry Bryant earlier. The time on it, 3 minutes, 10 seconds, 3.10. The win for Jimmy Hart's Dirty White Boys. We'll be back with more at Championship Wrestling as the uh, studio cleanup continues here in just a moment. The big uh, Russian for Chico stepping up onto the ring apron right now. This is going to be a one fall 15 minute time limit match. I think I said a handicap. Now, this is not a handicap match. This is a single match as Mark Batten of the new generation will be stepping in here as a single going against the big Russian. Mark Batten out of Charleston, West Virginia, 227 pounds. The big Russian carrying the flag for Chinko. Referee Jerry Calhoun. He wants the flag out of the ring. Bell's ringing. We are underway. Mark Batten, light green trunks, white boots going against Korchenko. Black singlet, black boots. The big Russian came down with the Russian flag and a uh, big old uh, thur furry waistcoat jacket. Mark Batten with a go behind. Korchenko doubles over Mark Batten. Good lord, he's a big man. Backs Mark Batten into the ropes. Big back elbow. Oh, big clobber and forearm there by Korchenko. And again. Oh, right hand by Batten though. Over the top of the head by Korchenko. Big right hand by Batten. Big clobber and forearm at the back by Korchenko. Grabs Mark Batten by the head. Rams him head first at the top turnbuckle. Oh, the blacks to the back. Korchenko picks up Batten. Forearm smash across the chest. Oh, picks him up by the throat, double-handed by the throat. Two, three, four, drops him at four. Kuchinka picks up Mark Patton again, scoops him up, picks him up. Gorilla presses him overhead, drops him down. <coughs> Picks him up by the hair. Over at the top of the head. Picks him up again. Irish up coming up by Korchenko. Oh, Mark Batten ducks close. Drop kick by Mark Batten. Down goes Korchenko. Mark Batten again. Oh no, side swipe there by Korchenko. Over drop by Korchenko. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. Korchenko picks up the victory. Well, as the crowd starts the USA chant, already Mark Batten has been pinned in a minute 38 seconds by the big Russian Korchenko. As he leaves the ring, Batten being helped out by uh, referee Jerry Calhoun, and that's it, a minute 38 seconds the time on it as the win goes to Korchenko. I tell you what, I think we'll, uh, we'll just keep it right here. That uh, was only a minute 38 seconds. Maybe we can just go right ahead and get uh, get our expiration of time match underway right now. It's going to be a, a uh, tag team match coming up. 
Well, let's see if we can uh, if we can uh, do that. Maybe get uh, the destroyers in here and Handsome Jimmy and Jerry the King Waller, and we will just continue with championship wrestling rolling right along here as long as we have time remaining. This will be an expiration of time match. That means could be one fall, could be three or four, just depending on uh, on how much time there is. There are the destroyers, and in their corner, it's uh, Jimmy Archie bodyguard, uh, the former doctor of Detroit. Waller and Baggett wasting no time. They're going after them. So we've got the destroyers going against Jimmy Valiant and Jerry Lawler. No idea who the destroyers are. They are masked men. Jerry Lawler wearing black and yellow, uh, black top yellow trousers on his single, black boots. Jimmy Valiant wearing black tights, white boots. The destroyers, both men wearing black masks, black tights, black boots. Jerry Lawler trying to chase away uh, Jimmy Hart Jr. Destroyers are rammed into each other. They just look like a couple of, uh, no offence, they look like a couple of jabrones. Probably guys who have already wrestled. It's probably like, uh, probably, um, oh, God, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. Fuck it. The, uh, Jim Jameson. One of us probably Jim Jameson, probably, and then somebody else. Jerry Lawler now. All four men back in the ring. Pile driver coming up by Lawler. Lawler's got one of the destroyers up and drops him in the pile driver. Oh, fist up by Lawler. Jerry Lawler, bit, uh, Jimmy Valiant choking the other destroyer. <coughs> Jimmy Valiant has uh, washed, he's sort of been washed down from that tower and feathering. He throws his destroyer to the ring and then follows him outside. Joe Lawler with the other one still in the ring. Jimmy Valiant now rams it. Oh, destroyer head first into the ring post. Good lord. Jimmy Valiant now with a broom. Smashes that over the back of the uh, destroyer. Big round by Jimmy Valiant. There's a destroyer who is with Joe Lawler's escapes and he's now trying to run away, but Lawler's following him. Lawler grabs him, rolls him back in the ring. Jimmy Valiant with the other one, rolls him back in the ring. All four men still in the ring. Joe Lawler trying to unmask one of the destroyers. Jimmy Valiant choking the other one in the corner. Harship by Jimmy Valiant. Sleeper. Jimmy Valiant's got the sleeper on one destroyer. Oh, Joey Calhoun just fell over. <laughs> oh, he threw him down. I thought he tripped over. <laughs> you couldn't quite tell from the camera angle. I thought he fell down. Jimmy Valiant was still with the sleeper. Hold applied. Jerry Lawler choking the other one. Referee doesn't really know what to do. He should get... No, two. No, he should be checking on the other destroyer who's in the sleeper hold. You need two referees here, Jeffs. Oh, Jimmy Valiant picks up the destroyer. Jimmy Valiant's working overtime today. Lawler picks up one destroyer. The other one's rammed headfirst into the top turnbuckle by Valiant. Joe Lawler just gets a pin. Jimmy Valiant with a big back elbow. Joe Lawler and Jimmy Valiant have won the first fall of this expiration of time match. I doubt there's probably going to be much more. The destroyers are thrown to the outside like trash. Lawler and Valiant follow him. Still continue to uh, beat up these poor destroyers. Big right hands, kicks. You name it. Valiant and Lawler are. Uh, oh, kicked him right in the took in the tuckus. Right in the tuckus. Lawler and Valiant upset but victorious here in the first fall. They get to win in this first fall of action. Well. Yeah, they're calling for the dirty white boys to come out here. I don't see them making a move this way. They're calling for them, though. I tell you what, we've got to take a break and uh, we'll check our time. See if there's time for a second fall against the destroyers when we come back in just a moment. Oh, I tell you what, uh, time is up. 
And maybe just in time, too. Here's, uh, here's what happened today on Championship Wrestling in uh, our opening. So as Dave runs down the card. That's about it. So we've just watched the 3rd of November 1984 edition of Memphis Television. It was all right. Yeah, we saw nothing. Ex- well, it was some exciting happenings, but nothing sort of... Uh, the sort of uh, was rem- was memorable, but it's good to see Jimmy Valiant back for a while. Obviously, we've seen him in promos, and he's been about, but it's the first time we've seen him in ring for quite a while, I think. So uh, yeah, so we are on the downward trajectory to 1984. We are only a few weeks away from that. So after today's show, we have got eight, we've only got eight weeks left from today. Eight weeks of Memphis left. Um, I think from what I can see on my uh, thumbnails on the YouTube, next week is going to be, I think from next week for a few weeks, something's going to change um, that most people probably forget about. But um, for me, I'm looking forward to that change just for a little bit. It'll be fun. So that's going to be that. So uh, don't forget to join us that week Annie, and every other week here on the Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. You can listen to us on the Place to Be Wrestling Network. You can listen to us on Old Bakery Productions Network as well. Don't forget to give everything on the Old Bakery a listen. I've sorry, everything on the Place to Be a listen as North, South and Backbone. There is going to be something on there for you because there's modern talk. There's retro talk. There's sometimes even no wrestling talk. If you listen to the Jenny Position or Talking Docs or anything that Jenny Jenny Smith does, she does a lot of non-wrestling stuff. She's also got her GC Dub and Extreme Spirit Dance shows that she does with some of the other guys. The uh, the fine gentleman that is Keithy Langston does a la carte with Keithy where he talks pretty 99% non-wrestling with guests. Uh, he's also got um, Hail to the Keith, his uh, historical podcast over there, and you've got every. And he's also on the Backbone Wrestling Network with the Shit Take, and uh, some other things that he guests, as well as uh, some fine stuff over there. So somewhere in those three uh, networks, there is going to be something for you to listen to. You can also listen to Friends of the Show, Our Vantage Point, Acid West Memories, Book and the Territories, Greetings from Allentown, Stick to Wrestling, John McAdam, The Outdated Wrestling Hour, with Bob Smith, as well as anything on the WrestleCopia Network, where Ray and his colleagues cover a whole range of uh, wrestling. You've got um, the USWA Retro Podcast with Gene Jackson, where he's covering like, 93 uh, USWA. He's also got uh, Dangerous uh, Doug Gilbert on a, on a podcast. Uh, Ray also talks pure Russo, um historical. He's also got um, 1988 WWF, as well as anything else that Ray does as well. So you go and give them a listen, as well as any other fine podcast that you can find on all good podcast supplies. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, as always, for your continued support. Thank you very much to the fine folk of Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you very much to Lance Russell, Dave Brown, and Jerry Jarrett. And until next time... When it's spring again, I'll bring again tulips from Amsterdam. With a heart that's true, I'll give to you tulips from Amsterdam. I can't wait until the day you fill these eager arms of mine Like the windmill keeps on turning That's how my heart keeps on yearning For the day I know we can Share these tulips from Amsterdam
These eager arms of mine Like the wind keeps on turning That's how my heart keeps on yearning For the day I know we can Share these tulips from Amsterdam Share these tulips from Amsterdam 